We're going to graph this surface now in R3. We have 12x squared plus y squared plus 3z squared equals 12. So we're going to start with the trace in the yz plane, since that's the surface of the paper. That's the easy one to do. So we'll plug in x equals 0, and we'll get y squared plus 3z squared equals 12. We'll recognize that as the equation of an ellipse. So to get it in standard form, we'll divide through by the constant term. We'll have y squared over 12 plus z squared over 4 equals 1. And in that form, it allows us to see easily that the y-intercepts will be plus and minus square root of 12. Square root of 12 is a little past 3 and a half, so we'll put a point there the positive and the negative part of the y-axis. And the z-intercepts will be plus and minus 2. So we'll go ahead and put some points there. And sketch in our ellipse. Okay, and just like in the last one we looked at, this ellipse in the yz plane, it's important that we pay attention to how that's reacting with the x-axis. This part of the x-axis over here that's positive coming out of the page would be in front of this ellipse that's in the surface of the paper. And then the back part of the x-axis going into the paper would be passing behind that ellipse that's in the surface of the paper. Okay, we're going to go ahead and do the next trace. We'll just go ahead and do y equals 0 next. So we'll have 12x squared plus 3z squared equals 12. So we've got another ellipse. If we divide through by 12, we'll get x squared over 1 plus z squared over 4 equals 1. Um, when we put it like that in standard form, it allows us to see the intercepts pretty easily. So we can see the x-intercepts will be plus and minus 1. Go ahead and put some points there. And the z-intercepts plus and minus 2. And we're going to notice that that agrees with our other z-intercepts that we already found. And that should happen. All right, and one more trace. If I plug in z equals 0, we'll get 12x squared plus y squared equals 12. And if I divide through by 12 one more time, we'll get x squared over 1 plus y squared over 12 equals 1. So that's another ellipse with x-intercepts at plus and minus 1, y-intercepts at plus and minus square root of 12. And if I connect those with an ellipse, I get kind of a like an equator here. Okay, and so we have this sort of uh, football-like shape, or maybe kind of looks like a potato, I guess. Um, this is called an ellipsoid, uh, so like a like a ball, um, but squished, so it's not perfectly round. I'm going to use my pen here to put in some contour lines to make it look three-dimensional. Um, so I'm just drawing some arcs parallel to that ellipse that's coming out toward us in the y or in the xz direction and then maybe also put some this way parallel to the cross section in the xy plane to make it look 3D. Okay. Um, so on this one you might notice just from looking at the equation it's pretty easy to see that we're going to get a lot of ellipses from this equation. So if we notice that right at the beginning it might be helpful to just divide through by 12 right at the beginning and um, that'll save us some work. You'll notice that in the work that we did um, over here in the colors I divided by 12 several times. So if I kind of notice that that's where we're going to be heading and just do that right at the very beginning um, notice that I get this equation here, x squared over 1 plus y squared over 12 plus z squared over 4 equals 1. And I can easily look at that and um, think about plugging in x equals 0 and that term would go away and see what I would have left pretty easily. And similarly when I plug in y equals 0 or z equals 0. So if you notice that, it's a great thing to do to start. Uh, for something like this. Uh, that works really well when you've got the same kind of trace in all three different coordinate axes or uh, coordinate planes. Um, so it doesn't always work for every kind of shape, but it's pretty handy for an ellipsoid.